Hey, what's up, people? Unlike what the uh, thumbnail would lead you to believe, no, this is not actually used for uh, finding ghosts or detecting paranormal activity or anything like that. Although it kind of does look like something that could be used as like a prop in a movie or something for a uh, set of uh, circumstances. Uh, no, however, it, this does let you uh, locate something that you normally would not be able to see. This is actually part of a Vivor branded uh, pipeline camera kit. And as we can see, it says right here, Vivor sewer camera with 512 hertz locator. And so this is an entire set that comes with a, a pipeline camera. It's got a display, like all the uh, wiring that you would stick down the drain is uh, like inside of this suitcase looking thing. And here's a locator that I actually have on hand. And on the very uh, top of it, you would see that we'd have this sort of like a uh, pipe based <laughs> looking explosive thing up at the top. Uh, that's going to be like the antenna for it. I do not actually have that on hand. And out of this entire kit, the only thing I really have is just uh, this uh, handheld uh, locator. So what this does is that this camera, uh, you'd stick it down the uh, drain and you'd use this display to be able to see, you know, where you're going. But you may not know where exactly the tubing leads or where it goes in the space where you're actually, you know, trying to like locate something. So you use this locator to figure out where exactly the camera is. And then if you need to dig to like fix some plumbing problem or whatever, you can uh, do so or, you know, make whatever uh, repairs you need to make. And I do not have this entire kit. The only thing I have is the actual like handheld unit. And according to my mom, who's the one that actually uh, bought this kit, uh, supposedly this handheld unit does not work. She said that when they received the kit, it uh, didn't work. So they contacted the company and they ended up sending them a, a new one. So uh, she let me have this so I could uh, tear it down and open it up. And it looks like a very simple unit. As we can see, there's just four buttons on the front. There's a, a battery compartment that houses uh, six AA batteries. So that'd be like a total of like nine volts unless it tapped elsewhere. Looks like we've got a speaker in the back. This is the uh, big uh, barrel looking uh, connector type of thing. It's got three contacts inside. Those are uh, pogo pin contacts. And this appears to be broken or something. It's like loose. So I don't know if it's actually supposed to extend like that or not, but it also seems to uh, tilt a little bit, but that doesn't feel normal. There's something rattling around inside. I guess we'll figure out what that is once we open it up. And these four buttons in the front, as we can see, this big one is just for power. We've got a minus sign on the right. We got this plus in the middle. I don't, I have no idea what any of these do. I have not actually used this thing myself and actually haven't even seen it. the rest of the uh, system. This is the only thing I've seen. And then we've got this button on the left and we can see it's got a couple words on it. So if we push it, I don't know what it would do. Let's see. Oh, that's what it does. No, I'm guessing that this button probably helps like with pinpointing, you know, where exactly the uh, actual camera is like located and maybe it like increases or decreases like sensitivity or something so that you can more easily like identify where the uh, signal is coming from. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. And there's also like a little uh, headphone jack looking thing right on the side of it. This is on the left side. But anyway, yeah, let's just open it up and see what's inside. It would have normally one, two, three, four five, six, uh, seven screws, although I have already removed uh, five of them just in the interest of saving time. So there's only two uh, in the middle. I have not opened this up myself, so I have not even seen the inside of it yet. So let's get in a little closer and we'll take off the uh, remaining two screws. Okay, that should allow those to come out. There they are. I'm guessing that there's gonna be like a very minimal amount of stuff in here. We're probably just gonna have some voltage regulation for the voltage coming from the batteries, like a microcontroller. Uh, an LCD and maybe I don't know if we're actually going to have like any uh, RF type stuff because I have a feeling that it's probably all in that antenna looking thing because as we can see the three contacts if we pull this out we can see what look like uh, three just plain looking wires inside so I really doubt that there's any like RF stuff that's going to be actually inside but I guess we'll find out I don't know so well, I can already tell you that far exceeded my expectations. I did not expect to see like a bunch of tiny ICs. So let's see, how does this come apart? It's just a bunch of connectors that are connecting this back end to the, to the board. So speaker, and then we got another three pin connector that goes to that headphone looking jack. I wonder if this is maybe for a headphone, although it's not actually labeled. But maybe you can actually like hear a tone or something. So you, it helps you like locate it in maybe like noisy situations or something. And then this two pin connector appears to just be for the battery. So yeah, it's just using a full nine volts. 
So as far as the back goes, that is it. And what was rattling in here? Oh, it's a screw. It looks like a, kind of like a machine threaded screw. And, okay, so this maybe came off right there. So this would have attached this uh, tubular part in place. Although it feels like it's stripped, so it's it's not it's not holding this down. So yeah, that's all that was for. So this would have been like a fix there to the casing so that it couldn't move. Oh, and this screw would have been part of that standoff that would have attached it. But this is actually also broken. So if we remove this part. There we go. This entire assembly can come out. So it looks like maybe it might have gotten broken in shipping or something. We might be able to push this uh, board out from the back. Ah. Well, I managed to make it move. <laughs> Not quite what I was hoping for, but it moved. And I broke a couple of the wires off. Oh, yeah. So that was glued in place. So that's all this board is. It's just uh, three, like, pogo pins. So these would have made contact with the that uh, antenna-looking thing. I think I just damaged this one trying to get it out, but yeah, that's all that is. Nothing crazy going on in there. And the speaker is a little 8 ohm, 1 watt speaker. And just based on where this is connected, it looks like, yeah, this is uh, for an external like headphone or something. Because as we can see, we've got three wires. And we can see on the board that there is one trace that goes from one of the pins on this connector over to this connector. And that's where the uh, speaker was connected to. So it looks like when there's something plugged into this jack, then it cuts off the internal speaker. So yeah, that kind of makes some sense. And then the other connector was where the battery was connected. As we can see, we've got some voltage regulation stuff. We've got a 78 MO5 regulator. So that'd be like a 500 milliamp uh, 5 volt regulator. And this one's a 79 MO5 regulator. So this is a negative 5 volt regulator. I can't see the markings on that 8 pin device just yet. We'll take a closer look at it here in a sec. And this is probably going to be just a small audio amplifier. I also cannot read the numbers uh, <laughs> with the naked eye, but that looks like it's going directly to this connector. So that's uh, that kind of makes some sense. I don't know what any of this other stuff is. It looks like we've got three uh, similar looking ICs or four, five, six, seven. I wonder why. Well, I guess we'll see what's on the opposite side of this board. I can't see what that is. I think my eyesight is going to crap, <laughs> but this looks like it's a maybe like a 44,000 series uh, chip, and I can't really uh, read what that is either. So it looks like this is the antenna input. As you can see, we got a lot of capacitance, and it's all spread out. So I don't not sure if that's for like uh, power purposes. Looks like the center one is ground, and then the two outer ones. One's probably going to be like maybe uh, five volts or, or I don't know, maybe five volts or something. I don't know, but it looks like it goes into that IC. So there's some pots, got four little pots. That's the ribbon for the LCD. You can go ahead and just undo that so we can get this board out. Got another three pin connector on the side. I'm wondering if maybe that's like a, like a serial port or something. All right, so we got one, two, three, and four screws to remove and we can pull this board out. Okay, so four of those screws are out. Let's pull this ribbon off. And there's got to be a microcontroller on the other side of this. Ah, there it is. So, yeah, that's it on the other side. It's just uh, the microcontroller, four buttons, some capacitors. There's a the display. It looks like it's uh, CNK 12864 or 12864. So this is going to be like a 128 by 64 a dot display looks like it was made in uh, 2022 uh, that looks like it might be in november 28th 2022 and looks like we just have uh, some tabs on the top and the bottom holding it in place there it is so yeah just a basic uh, monochrome display i think uh i saw some of the images it looks like it might be bluish or something like that or maybe even like uh, white uh, dots so not a color lcd i don't think but I could be wrong. I guess we could try to power up the thing and see what it looks like. Well, let's grab the microscope. Let's see what uh, kind of stuff we're looking at. And this is a close-up of the microcontroller. It's an STC branded AG2K64S4 microcontroller. 
and I actually was able to find some information about it. So it's an 8051 core. Uh, it says a single clock per machine cycle, uh, in a uh, fully compatible instruction set with 8051. And so it has 128 bytes of uh, direct access RAM, 128 bytes in direct access RAM, uh, two kilobytes of extended RAM. So it's going to be like a very uh, basic microcontroller. It looks like it has uh, quite a bit of uh, peripherals built in, including uh, ADCs. So I didn't expect to actually find any information about it, but nah, at least uh, I guess we know what it is. And we can see that there's a bunch of lines coming off of this microcontroller going straight into the area where the LCD connector is. So this is controlling the LCD directly. This uh, big thick trace there looks like it might be like a power trace. And then we've got uh, various other vias leading off into uh, other things. This is the 8-pin device that's set in between the two voltage regulators. And it makes sense because this is an uh, ICL7660. It's a, a CMOS voltage converter. And so what this uh, chip does is that it can take a positive voltage and output a, a complementary negative voltage. So it looks like it's a, a charge pump type device, as we can see. So this is uh, what's being used to provide a negative voltage to the negative uh, 5 volt regulator. And that's how we're able to get uh, both a positive 5 and a negative 5 volts from uh, just a, a 9 volt uh, input source. And we can see that there's a fairly thick trace coming out of pin number 5 of this I see that goes around, goes to this capacitor. It looks like it's going to be the same trace that goes off in this direction. And this goes into the uh, center or the tab of the uh, f negative 5 volt regulator. So that's definitely what's feeding that. Uh, we can see that this is the uh, ground pin, and so this would be the uh, negative uh, 5 volts coming out of uh, the regulator and going off and uh, feeding on uh, other things, probably some op amps. And really no surprise is seeing an LM386 inside. This is a very, uh, like a jelly bean component for uh, audio amplification. So this is what's going off into the connectors that go to the, uh, the headphone looking jack and the speakers. So really not surprised to see that inside. And then we've got one TL062, two TL062, three TL062, and four TL062. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there's five TL062, six TL062, and a combo breaker SA602A. But then over on the section where the antenna goes connected, we also have another TL062. And all seven of those uh, TL062s, those are dual 30 volt, one megahertz uh, inputs, uh, uh, JFET input operational amplifiers. So why there's so many inside of this thing, I have no idea. And I'm not about to try to reverse engineer this thing. That NXP branded SA602A device, that's a double balanced mixer and oscillator. It says that it's a low power VHF monolithic double balanced mixer with input amplifier, onboard oscillator and voltage regulator. It is intended for high-performance, low-power communication systems, which makes sense because this is a receiver for the, the camera. Not for the video, but just for whatever sort of signal it's uh, producing in order to be able to locate the thing. And so, eh, more text, more description about it. Uh, this is looks like this is what it's got inside. So, voltage regulator, it's got the oscillator, and that's all the, uh, looks like maybe a little amplifier, the mixer stuff. So, yeah, no clue what this is actually uh, doing in here, but based on what it says it's uh, meant to do, I guess it makes sense. Uh, the two devices that I said were probably a 4000 series devices. We got a 4051 and then we've got a, a 4053. And I found one uh, Texas Instruments uh, data sheet that actually covers both devices. These are a CMOS single eight channel analog multiplexers or demultiplexers with uh, logic level conversion. So the uh, 4051 looks like we've got one uh, common and then we've got eight channels that we can uh, select from. And on the 4053, it looks like we've got three commons and each one of those can select between uh, two different inputs. Uh, or outputs, depending on how it's configured. So I'm guessing between the two of these, they got something to do with the selection between a bunch of these uh, op amps. Because it looks like we've got stuff that runs over from uh, this side of the board over to like this area of the board. And then just like stuff that jumps like back and forth on the back side as well. And I have a feeling that these probably work alongside with that uh, near and the far button. And the microcontroller selects uh, different... Uh, sensitivities based on you know what these uh, switches uh, select we've got another cd4051 over on this side right next to the lcd connector and then the last i see that we haven't looked at yet is this uh, cd4024 and this is a, a cmos a ripple carry a binary counter uh, divider and it, it would be this diagram where we've got uh, the input coming in and we have a reset and then we've got seven outputs 
So I'm guessing that maybe this has something to do with like enabling things at like certain periods of time. And maybe that's for like discrimination purposes so that the signals that this thing's receiving maybe get filtered in some sort of way. Uh, that's just a guess. I, I, I have no idea how this is actually working. Okay, let's see if it'll fire up and do anything. I don't need to fix this if it's not working. I just thought it'd be interesting to take it apart and see what was inside. But yeah, let's see if it does anything. So I've got nine volts coming in. I'm clipping it onto the uh, two terminals over the uh, battery compartment is. And yeah, I'm just providing nine volts. Let's see if it turns on. And we've got a line and nothing showing up. So I'm guessing that's what it was doing. It just doesn't seem to do anything. So yeah, we get a backlight, but nothing shows up on the display. Oh, never mind. You have to hold down the power button and then it powers up. So yeah, that's so it does power on. You just have to hold it down for a sec. So I'm guessing maybe this power button has uh, some sort of uh, other circuitry that it uses to apply power to the microcontroller. And then once you push it again, the microcontroller shuts off that circuitry, maybe like some sort of transistorized uh, latch or something. So right now it says S, uh, I'm guessing S would be the signal that right there indicates the battery. It says gears far and then near. So that changes that. I don't know what gears mean. D. I don't know what this means either. It says goes from D1 to uh, D8, 9, 9. Yeah. That's funny. You can hit the, the negative to go down, but it will not uh, go back up to 8. But you can hit the positive, and it goes past 8, and then it goes 9, overflows back to 1. But this one doesn't let you go back, so that's kind of interesting. So yeah, I can't really do much with this thing as is. Uh, I, I kind of like the the display though. That's actually kind of neat. Maybe I could uh, look, find a data sheet for it. <laughs> Use that at least for something else. <laughs> Check this out. So I'm going to hold down the power button. Good bay. <laughs> That's quality. So there we go. That was the inside of a Vivor 512 receiver. Definitely a lot more a little stuff on this board than I was actually expecting to see, but I always like to guess and see how wrong I actually am. And in this particular case, I was uh, way wrong because I thought there was just going to be like the microcontroller and the LCD and maybe like a few other little miscellaneous of voltage stuff. But it turned out that there's a <laughs> total of like seven uh, op amps, some uh, 4000 series logic, and even this uh, voltage converter. I thought that was actually kind of kind of cool. So I tried to uh, find a data sheet for uh, this LCD. I didn't find anything right off the bat. I might need to uh, look a little deeper, but I mean, this is uh, something that I would definitely maybe uh, try to uh, use for something. So yeah, that's going to do it. If you ever wondered what was inside a VWAR 512 receiver, there you go. All right. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys around the bench. Good bay.